Hello YouTube, it's Supernova back with more x 11. In this video we'll look at VOR navigation and autopilot in the Carinado King Air B200. Departing from runway 20 we will follow the published noise preferred routing, climbing to 500 feet on runway heading before turning right to 217 degrees towards the river Itchen. At 2,000 feet, or having reached Southampton Water, we will then turn to the east, towards the Goodwood VOR station. To set the Horizontal Situation Indicator, or HSI, heading bug to 217, rotate the heading knob on the pedestal. We do this to provide a reference point on the HSI when making our initial turn. Select the file flight plan altitude. There are two VORs on our file flight plan. Goodwood or Golf Whiskey Charlie and Seaford or Sierra Foxtrot Delta. Think of a VOR as a bicycle wheel with a VOR station at its centre and the 360 spokes radiating out from the centre, the VOR radials. The radial to the north is the 360 radial, to the east the 090 radial, the south the 180 radial and to the west the 270 radial. The to from indicator indicates whether we are flying to or from the VOR station. If we are flying to the VOR, we are on a bearing to the VOR. If we are flying from the VOR, we are on a radial from it. For example, if the VOR station was at 090 and we were on a heading of 270, we would be on the 270 radial and the to from indicator would indicate from. But if our heading was 090, we would be on a bearing of 090 degrees to the VOR, and the to from indicator would indicate to. The course deviation indicator, or CDI, indicates our position relative to the desired radial. With the to from indicator indicating to, and the CDI needle to the left, we would adjust our heading to the left to meet the desired radial or to the right if the CDI needle was to the right. To fly directly to a VOR station, simply rotate the course knob until the CDI is centred and the to from indicator indicates to. Then turn to the heading indicated, keeping the CDI needle centred. VOR signals have a range up to 200 miles. To confirm that the VOR station is in range, having tuned NAV1 or NAV2 to the station's frequency, Set the appropriate nav control on the audio panel to the on position and listen for its Morse code identifier. Enter the Goodwood VOR frequency as the standby nav1 channel and make it active. Then enter the Seaford frequency as the standby NAV1 channel. We will use a bearing of 104 to the Goodwood VOR station. To set the course to 104, Rotate the course knob.
At 500 feet we turn right to 217 degrees. At 2000 feet, or at Southampton Water, we turn left towards the east. Note the position of the CDI on the HSI. The Goodwood VOR 284 radial is to our left. The autopilot can follow the heading indicated by the heading bug. It can also follow a VOR course. To instruct the autopilot to follow a VOR course, press the nav button. The autopilot can also climb or descend to a specified altitude. To instruct the autopilot to climb to the filed altitude set earlier on the instrument panel, press altitude select. Adjust the climb rate in feet per minute or FPM. When the desired altitude has been reached, the autopilot will select altitude hold mode. To activate the autopilot, press the autopilot engage button. As we reach the Goodwood VOR station, the to from indicator will change from to to from. Note the distance to the VOR station is now increasing. We now adjust the course to 099 degrees towards Seaford VOR. And as Seaford VOR has already been set as the standby NAV1 frequency, we can make it active. Note the to from indicator has also changed to 2. And as we are now flying towards the new VOR, the distance to it is again decreasing. When we reach the Seaford VOR, we will turn to a heading of 105 and follow the 105 radial to our destination. I hope you enjoyed that look at navigation and autopilot in the Caminado King Air B200. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you again for the next X-Plane video.